Oh, because the Democrats need a pre-apology. See, when they lose, there's going to have to be some kind of narrative that foreign influence is the reason Trump won again. I think Trump's going to win. Why? Well, first and foremost, if you watch the video on my main channel at four, it's called what, what I mean by the left is going insane. I don't mean that the moderate Democrats who are moderate and have always been moderate or even sl- somewhat left leaning are insane. I think Kyle Kalinske is a good dude. I think Jimmy Dore is awesome and fantastic and consistent. And David Pakman as well. I believe these people do a really good job. Sometimes when I watch like David Pakman, for instance, I roll my eyes at the things he says, but that's sometimes. And the reason I do is because I disagree with him and I respect that. I respect that he produces content I disagree with and I watch it on purpose. In fact, I think he might be, he might be the only other pundit I actually watch on YouTube. And I've known, I've known him for a long time. And the reason I do is I'm very critical of the fringe element of the left. I try to make sure I'm watching trusted personalities who have criticisms towards, you know, my criticisms or towards, you know, Dave Rubin or the intellectual dark web types, because I'm fans of those guys, uh, those people, women included. And so I think David's a, a good balancing force. Kyle Kalinske, he's great. Anyway, I don't want to get, a, I don't, I don't want to sidetrack. I'm going on a rant. Let's read this story about the sustained and ongoing disinformation assault targeting Democratic presidential candidates. Why? Because when the Democrats are fractured and lose, they're going to need a pre-apology to say, see, see, we called it out in, in February of 2019. We knew it. We knew it was going to happen. A wide-ranging disinformation campaign aimed at Democratic 2020 candidates is already underway on social media with signs that foreign state actors are driving at least some of the activity. The main targets appear to be Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and Beto O'Rourke, four of the most prominent announced or prospective candidates for president. A political review of recent data extracted from Twitter and from other platforms, as well as interviews with data scientists and digital campaign strategists, suggests that the goal of the coordinated barrage appears to be undermining the nascent candidacies through the dissemination of memes, hashtags, misinformation, and distortions of their positions. But the divisive nature of many of the posts also hints at a broader effort to sow discord and chaos within the Democratic presidential primary. Mm. The cyber propaganda, which frequently picks at the rawest, most sensitive issues in public discourse, is being pushed across a variety of platforms and with a more insidious approach than in the 2016 presidential election. I'm going to go ahead and say you're crazy that one of the lead organizations claiming this is, uh, was caught red handed in a, in a hoax against a Republican in Alabama. And I also want to point out, do you let me ask you this. Do you think it is a problem that foreign governments invest in media and manipulation campaigns to sway public elections in the United States? Is that, is that a problem? Well, they can do it. Nothing's, not, there's nothing stopping somebody from pushing a narrative or having an opinion. We have a First Amendment in this country. Well, I love how the narrative is often about Russia. Russia is pushing propaganda. They're divisive. What is RT, right? Russia today, what are they propping up? They've got Lee Camp. That darn anti-war leftist comedian, he's being, he's got a show on RT. You've got the mafic media types like Rania Kalik, who's criti- critical of U.S. intervention in foreign war. Heavens, heavens, that somebody in this country might not want us to be bombing foreign countries. Oh, but their resources are coming from Russia. See, RT is also, you know, has been very critical of people like Sargon of Akkad, and they've called him names, and they've been critical of anti-SJW types as well. And they tend to push an overtly pro-activist narrative, giving a lot of space to Occupy Wall Street, for instance, and many of these other leftists. And then we heard in 2016, it was Russia, oh, Russia, meddling in our election, funding Russian propaganda in the United States. How dare they? How dare they? Look, I got a really good example of this. How dare this this organization get 2.2 billion Facebook video views? And tw- oh, I'm sorry. This is Al Jazeera. This is Al Jazeera who is funded by the Qatari government, who pushes far left narratives, extremely divisive content, props up activism, is opposed, uh, it, it pushes a an anti-Israel or pro-Palestinian narrative, which I'm not saying they, they can't do. They often favor Black Lives Matter and other identitarian politics, which is increasingly divisive in the U.S., and often follows the same narrative that we see from RT and from these other organizations. But hold on, where's the narrative about Qatari influence in American politics? But wait, it gets better. Let me name some Canadians who are influencing and meddling in U.S. politics, if you want to follow that narrative. We've got uh, in Canada, Lauren Southern. 
Steven Crowder, who I, I believe he's American now, though, but he was born in Canada, I, I believe. I could be wrong. Stefan Molyneux, um, who, uh, who, Rebel Media is particularly prominent. They're all Canadian. These damn Canadian influence campaigns. But it gets worse. British. Paul Joseph Watson, Milo Yiannopoulos, these damn foreign meddlers in our economy, or I'm sorry, in our elections coming here and pushing this narrative. Yes. But only because it hurts the Democrats do they push the Russia narrative. Look, I think it's obvious to anybody that Russia, Qatar, uh, Venezuela, for instance, right, with Telesur, we know that they're, they're pushing media and funding these things because it helps them politically. But you got a problem. Free speech is paramount in this country, right? Free speech is protected in this country. That means, uh, so, so here, what I want to point out is, well, I mentioned it in my video earlier today. I don't think I have the tabs pulled up anymore. We have, oh, no, no, I, I have one of them. We have this. CNN contacted Facebook and said, you know, look at these media organizations that get funding through Russia. They didn't report the story until three days later when Facebook took down this organization. And the reason I bring this up is they constantly try and claim that, you know, Russia is influencing and doing all these things. But Rania Kalik, this woman right here, is uh, an American. I mean, as far as I'm pretty sure she's American, who has an opinion. She's allowed to have that opinion. Why was her organization suspended from Facebook when they didn't break any rules? Well, it's because the Democrats can't fight fair, apparently, or whoever is supporting them can't fight fair. Look at it this way. In the 2016 election, Donald Trump was not supposed to win. He wasn't supposed to win the primary. They hated him. He was an outsider. Sure, he was wealthy and powerful, but he's not part of the political class. He was a realist, a TV, real, uh, what was he, a reality TV real estate mogul. Okay. He ends up winning. What happens when he wins the primary? Or I'm sorry, he wins the primary. There it was. Boom. End of story. He's the candidate. The Republicans sat back and said, well, you know, it's going to Trump. But what did the Democrats do? The Democrats played dirty. They destroyed Bernie Sanders' chance, and Bernie should have won the primary. Nobody wanted Hillary Clinton. Only, like, people who were uninitiated and weren't paying attention wanted Bernie. It was Hillary's turn. So we know, for a fact, they cheated. Jimmy Dore tweeted something earlier today. He's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, he, he tweeted in response to somebody who I, I don't know who they were, but they tweeted, are we just going to ignore the fact that DNC ch- the DNC cheated in 2016 to, d- to push out Bernie Sanders? And Jimmy said, uh, or, 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 I think they said, they said something to the effect like, are we going to do anything about the fact that the DNC cheated? And Jimmy said, nope, he's right, we're not. So let's look at the narrative now, okay? The narrative is that the foreign adversaries are trying to, to take down the Democrats. You know, if you were going to ask me, after what we saw at the DNC in 2016 with Bernie getting cheated out of his, his uh, primary win, after what we saw in Alabama with uh, Democratic operatives, as reported by the New York Times, staging a false flag campaign pretending to be Russians to smear Republicans, I'm going to go half, I'm going to go ahead and lean towards the Democrats be cheating. They're manipulators. Not all of them, but there's operatives who are trying to guarantee the win because they don't want to play fair. They did it in the DNC to Bernie. They did it in Alabama. Why wouldn't they be doing it again? And I'll say this, Politico, Natasha Karecki, you should not be uncritically reporting this. You need infosec experts, uh, opsec experts, people who understand how this stuff works, and you need at least three sources, and preferably not the ones who were busted staging false flag campaigns to smear Republicans. They talk about reviewing data and all that stuff. Let's go down. We got a quote. Who is this from? Guardians.ai. He said, it looks like the 2020 presidential primary is going to be the next battleground to divide and confuse Americans, said Brett Horvath, one of the founders of Guardians.ai, a tech company that works with a consortium of data scientists, academics, and technologists to disrupt cyber attacks and protect pro-democracy groups from information warfare. As it relates, as it relates to information warfare in the 2020 cycle, we're, we're not on the verge of it. We're already in the third inning. We're living in a nightmare future dystopia where we can't tell what's true anymore. We know they staged these false flags to smear Republicans. They're probably doing it now, but how do we prove it? How do we know? What happens when Chase sus- shuts down the bank account of a conservative? What happens when Twitter starts banning people arbitrarily? What happens when our public and private discourse is on a social platform that knows they are being manipulated by foreign entities, but thinks it's fine to ban Americans for their opinions. Twitter is a platform where they allege 
people are manipulating politics. Twitter knows that foreign actors use their platform to push divisive opinions, especially those that support, you know, left wing identity groups like Black Lives Matter. I'm not trying to criticize Black Lives Matter, but yes, they are supported by the Russians. This is this has been carried far and wide. And if we're going to assume that's true, think about what that means. It means Twitter will say we will allow foreign entities to go on our platform and, and manipulate people. And they do. And look, Twitter wants to get rid of them. Sure, they can't. But they have no problem getting rid of conservatives, actual Americans with opinions. Twitter is allowing foreign agents to influence our elections while restricting the voice of actual Americans with opinions. Welcome to the nightmare dystopia of 2019, moving into 2020. Thanks for hanging out. I will have another video tomorrow at 10 a.m. and I will see you then.